Hey friends, welcome to the academic video for the catapult project. When people are designing and building these catapults, whether they know it or not, there are tons of STEM principles at place. In this video, we're going to focus on the main three, starting with elastic potential energy. So what is this stuff? When you think of elastic potential energy, we want you to think of things like trampolines and rubber bands and springs and even slingshots. We want you to think of things that stretch, compress, or even twist. And what's happening when those things stretch, compress, and twist is energy is being built up. And as soon as they're released, think about all the energy that's being transferred. In our case, our goal is to maximize the elastic potential energy in our catapult and have it seamlessly transferred to kinetic energy, which is the energy associated with motion. Elastic energy's equation is displayed on your screen right now, and it's not incredibly complex. It really only depends on x, how far something was stretched or compressed, and k, also known as the spring constant. The spring constant doesn't necessarily have to be a spring. Rubber bands have spring constants too. In this example, the red rubber band has a much higher k value, which also leads to a much higher potential energy when stretched the same distance as the yellow rubber band. The next topic we want to quickly introduce you to is projectile motion, or kinematics. And we're going to put the handful of kinematic equations on the screen over here on the right, but don't be overwhelmed. All they do is describe the motion of an object. They can describe the motion from anything like a basketball shot to a baseball player knocking a ball out of a park. And what's really cool about these equations is if you just know a couple things, like say, the initial velocity of an object or the starting height before it was launched. If you use these equations right, they will tell you everything you need to know about an object. What's also cool is you can transfer these equations to work on a different planet just by changing the gravitational constant. These equations are useful from people like NASA engineers all the way to people like a basketball player trying to improve his or her shot, which I could use some help with myself. You by no means have to master any of these equations, but hey, who knows, they might be useful for you when you're trying to fine tune your catapult. If you're just missing the mark on your target, take a look at these equations and see if you could figure out if maybe a higher initial velocity or a different starting height might help you out. Finally, we want to quickly talk about accuracy versus precision. You've probably heard these two words before, but have you ever really wondered what the difference is? Did you know that you can be accurate without being precise, and vice versa? Data seems to be the talk of the town lately and such a big deal. And accuracy and precision are huge components of data, so we figured we'd take a quick stop here and try to clarify any differences for you. On your screen right now is the classic example of a dartboard to illustrate accuracy versus precision. Like I mentioned earlier, they are not the same thing. And in these CAD renderings, you can see what they look like when accuracy and precision come together, with the absence of both, and even what they look like on their own. Accuracy is commonly referred to how close a measurement is to the target value, in our case, what we're aiming our catapult at, while precision refers to how close the measurements are to each other, even if they're far away from the target. Obviously our goal in our design this month is to have both an accurate and a precise catapult, but I promise that's a lot easier said than done. Just keep this data in mind when you're doing your trial runs and trying to hit your target from as far as possible, and go back to some of the other stuff we talked about, or join our Zoom calls if you're having any issues. We'd love to help get your catapult resolved so it performs the best that it can. So that's all we really have for you. Just keep this elastic potential energy stuff in mind, and how it's created, how it behaves, how it's going to transfer to kinetic energy and projectile motion. This project is also a prime example of the engineering design process, you know, just playing with different materials and weighing options and coming up with a great machine, especially in designing your own ammo that you're going to launch. So thank you for tuning into this video and please stay tuned for the next video where we're going to give you some tips and examples and some obstacles to avoid when building your catapult.